What's going on guys? Welcome to RCRV. I'm Matt and today we are installing slide covers on Alfredo and Antonella's fifth wheel. Now I actually did this last week on Renzo's camper so I have a little bit of practice but I am in no way an expert so read the directions <laughs> you could do something wrong if you follow me honestly that being said i do have a couple tips that i used that i learned last week that kind of helped me do the install so i do want to share those with you guys for the sake of time i'm only going to show you one slide topper install because they're all pretty much the same if you know how to do one uh, you can do them all. I was going to start with this one here on the dinette slide, but we've run into some problems and I want to keep it real and, and show you guys because it may be some stuff that you guys run into as well. You have to excuse me that the sun's like right in my face, but uh, I'm going to take you over here and let's check out some of the issues that we're having with some of these toppers. All right. So here in the garage, we've got, this is one of the slide toppers that we're supposed to put on and you see when they come in the box they come with these little middle arm brackets and these are already pre-installed and there is a little friction pin that is in this hole that holds this bracket onto the awning rail well when we undid the box on this side you'll notice that the rail was not on so it comes with this little bushing to roll it you see there's a hole here and then there's a hole on this and they line up like that. And then there's a little friction pin that just holds it on. Now I'm gonna contact LCI and see if either A, they can send me a new little pressure fitting or probably I might just run over to Home Depot and see what I can find just to get that in there. So we're not gonna do this one today. The, uh, the dinette slide. This is a situation we've got going on with this one. So I'm gonna cover this when we do the other one, but you have these plates that are supposed to go on the top of the slide rails. Now your plates can either install in this area here or above on here. Now we can't put it here because of this awning. So we're going to have to install it here. But as you see, the awning track is too long for this bracket to fit. Now the other side, is actually fine I already measured it and it'll fit there so what I'm going to have to do is trim down this metal I'm gonna take my Dremel and I'm gonna cut this down I only need about three quarters of an inch to get this to work it'll still clear the fabric in there it's just extra metal but I don't have my Dremel on me right now so I'm gonna have to do this tomorrow so I've got two other awnings on the other side that we can do uh, I'm going to take you over and show you. We're going to get one done, give you some tips that I found last week from doing Renso's, and um, yeah, get these installed. All right, so the first step in the process is actually to install those tracks on the RV. Now, Alfredo Nanto's RV already has them pre-installed from the factory. So this is the track that the back of the slide topper uh, will slide into. Um, they don't have the brackets installed, so we will have to install the brackets, uh, and these are already installed. We're just going to reuse these. Our camper, we have an alliance, is actually opposite. So we have the brackets pre-installed, but we don't have the track installed. So when we get ready to do this to our camper, it's going to be the reverse. I will tell you after doing Renzo's, because in Renzo's camper, I had to do both. The, uh, the easiest way I found, the instructions say to go between three to six inches above your slide. So measure from here three to six inches up, and that's where the track should go. What I did was just take a tape measure, I measured about five inches up, took a pencil, drew a line, did another one in the center, and then did another one at the end, then took the track, put it up there, held it, and then just took a pencil and drew a straight line all the way across. Just on the fiberglass, it's just pencil, it rubs right off. That kind of gives me a nice line to know when we install these. Now the instructions say you can use sealant, um, I use this butyl tape, so I'd recommend using this stuff. Not only I think does it seal better, but it's super sticky, so it actually holds it up there. So this is the awning track that I just showed you. This is the one that comes with the kit, and we're not gonna use this one, but if you were to use this, what you'll do is, this is the side that sticks out that your, uh, your awning slides into. So on the back side of it, what you do is you just take your butyl tape, and you're gonna run it down the whole length of the track. It makes it easy. You can take this track and then you just stick it right below the line that you drew and it'll stay there by itself with the tape. And then you can go in and put in all the screws. I found it 
made it a lot easier than trying to have two or three people hold it up there in a straight line and screw it in. The butyl tape, it just sticks right to it and holds it in place for you. That being said, we don't have to do that today. So we're gonna go on the other side and we're gonna install the brackets, which is the second step if you read the instructions. Highly suggest you read the instructions, but uh, we're gonna go install the brackets on the other side and I'll show you how I measure those and just a couple things to look out for. You guys like these type of videos? Let me know in the comments section. We, uh, we actually do a lot of stuff to our RVs. We very rarely, if ever, turn them into the dealerships for work. But uh, surprisingly, we don't shoot a lot of these how-to type videos. So I'm not sure if it's something you guys are interested in. We've actually done a lot to the RVs. Uh, we put the soft starts on the air conditioner units. We put the storage tubes on the bottom. Uh, we tore apart Renzo's Nautilus system, trying to fix a water pump issue that turned out to be a faulty check valve. So we actually do quite a bit, but uh, we typically only shoot our travel stuff. So if it's something you guys are interested in, let me know and we'll start recording more of this stuff. All right, so this is the bracket that we're gonna install. Uh, the instructions say you can install it either this way or this way, it doesn't matter. I will tell you that the uh, spacing from the holes that you have to drill in, this way they'll be lower towards the bottom. If you put it this way, they'll be towards the top. So for this installation, I'm gonna put it like this because as you'll see, we gotta get them close to the bottom. So you can either put the bracket in this location, in this corner, or you can put it up here. So for our installation, I'm gonna put it right here and the biggest thing is that you want to make sure that when you put the screws in that you're actually into the framing and you're not sliding through this so if you can see from here if i go too high the screw is going to pop out right here what you want it is to make sure that it's inside the framing so easy way that i found to do this is get a tape measure and then stick your tape measure behind the slide and measure down so now it's touching the framing. So you can see right now we're at three and three eighths of an inch. So take it the opposite way, find three and three eighths of an inch, which is right there. And we're gonna mark it with a pencil here. So now we know that that is the top of the framing. So we take our bracket, it's actually gonna go right here, but for the purpose you can see it, I'm gonna just stick it off to the side. So we know that that place right there is the top of our framing, so you cannot have your holes above that line. So now we know how far down we need to measure to make sure that these holes are all inside the framing. So what I'm gonna do when I go pick up my tape measure is I'm gonna measure down from here to the top of this bracket here, and uh, then I'll know that's where I draw a line. Whatever that measurement was, draw a pencil line, and that'll give me the actual line I need to when I install this. Now we're gonna do the same thing with this one that you do with the tracks. We're gonna put some butyl tape on the back of it so it sticks, we'll find our line, and we'll stick it there and then drill the holes in. Here's another quick tip for you guys that I learned by making the mistake myself. Don't use an impact driver. Uh, use a regular drill. For all these screws that come in it, you gotta screw the tracks on, you gotta screw the brackets in. Um, these are the little locking screws that go on the uh, external bracket that slides over this. Anything you need to do, use a regular drill, you have more control, these will snap. Trust me, I've snapped just about every one of these. I had to go to Home Depot and buy extras for uh, the last time we did this. So, impact driver, even on the lowest setting, it still will snap the bolts. This gives you a little bit more control and you can feather the trigger. So use a regular drill. that stain there so now what we do is I'm gonna pre-drill these holes and then get the screws put in
All right, got both of these mounting brackets installed on both sides, and now we're getting ready to go to the next step. So the instructions say to spray some silicon lubricant in the track. Uh, I use WD-40 because I don't have any silicone right now, but it's just something to help it slide in easily. You also want to check these corners. So this is where you're going to actually slide the fabric in and make sure that these aren't burred. It says to use a screwdriver and open this up a little bit, but I found that they're plenty wide to slide it in. You don't need to open it up anymore. Um, but I would definitely check and make sure that there's no metal burrs that you need to file down because as you slide your awning in, you don't want to be ripping it all the way down. So we're gonna get the awning in. We're gonna slide over our covers on these, but leave them loose for now, and I'll show you why. I'm gonna figure out how to set up another ladder and get the camera on there to show this because this is gonna take two hands. Really, if you have two people, it's a lot easier. One person can do it. I did it by myself last week at Renzo's, but if you have another hand, definitely recommend it. So let me figure out this camera situation and we'll start installing these toppers. Oh! So here's another useful tip. I'm gonna throw this one in as a bonus. When you're climbing down the ladder, make sure you're on the bottom rung. All right, so we got the access plates installed on the side of the RV. These are the access plate covers. So these actually just slide in the rails at the, of the access plates we just put on. What I have found is, especially if you're doing this by yourself, what I'm gonna do is put one of these on and actually lock it in place, and then the second one leave loose. So they come with these little lock thread screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread these in and get this one locked into place. I'm gonna just start the threads in each one just so I don't have to do it on the ladder. All right, so when installing these bracket plates, what I've found is whatever side that you're gonna start on, that's the side you're gonna lock in. So I'm gonna start on this side. I'm gonna take the awning cover and I'm gonna slide from this side to that side. So this bracket cover, I'm gonna secure. That one I'm gonna put on, but just leave loose. All right, so here's our first bracket plate. Now these can go on two different locations. You can put them either here or you can put them on the top. So for our measurements, we're gonna put them on the lower setting and they just slide right in there. Now you see how this is gonna be loose? This is how we're gonna keep this just as a placeholder. We're going to slide the awning cover all the way down and we're gonna use that little L bar to put on this side of the slide so that it supports the weight of it as we slide it down. That side will be locked in so as we slide the awning cover down, we can actually just slide it right into the cover and lock it in. And then we can come down here, move this and put it over it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is make sure that we've got this centered. So on this track, you can slide these. As soon as we get it centered, you've got two screws here on the bottom that we're gonna screw some self-tapping screws in there to lock this in place. And then we're gonna have to run the slide in and out to center the track. All right, got the brackets hooked up, everything's secured. The only thing we left loose is where the fabric actually attaches to the track and the instructions say to leave that loose. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take out the pins that are holding the, uh, the springs and the rod. So right now there's no tension on the rod. We're gonna take those pins out and then it'll put tension on the rod and the fabric should get tight. And then we need to run the slide out out and in a few times. And what that's gonna do is make sure that the center of the track that the fabric is sitting in is centered. Remember, that's loose, so it'll slide and kind of find its center. So we're gonna get these pins out and run the slides in and out. And 
now's probably a good time to say, I really don't like ladders. I've fallen three times in this video so far. So the last step here is we got to secure this fabric in the track. So the instructions say you need to come about in, no more than an inch in from the edge of the fabric and we need to stick these self-tapping screws through the metal, through the fabric, through the little rubber piece that holds the fabric just to lock everything in place. So there is absolutely no way I can do this on camera because I need both my hands and I'm sideways on a ladder. So just know this is what I'm getting ready to do. All right, that's it. Got the awning installed. So overall, not too complicated. If you're gonna do this for your first time, definitely read all the directions. Don't use this video as a all-inclusive step-by-step video. I do hope it helps some people feel a little more comfortable about doing it yourself. If there's some of you guys out there that have done this before, uh, leave a comment below. Let us know, is there an easier way to do some of these steps? Or <laughs> let me know, maybe I did something wrong too. Like to know that as well. Uh, next weekend is travel week, so we'll be back to regular scheduled programming of travel videos. Uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Let me know if you like this type of stuff, just kind of the raw how to do stuff. Leave a comment down below, let me know. We do a lot of things to our RVs. We just happen not to record too much of it. And uh, it does take longer to do some of these mods and installs while I'm recording. But hey, if you guys are interested, we'll start recording more. So until next time, guys, we'll see you out there.